Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I've uploaded a video. I've just been super busy with a bunch of other stuff lately. Uh, so apologies for that, but we're back again with something new today. So I've added a new tool to my uh, drum workflow. I did a full walkthrough or how to use video with Sonic Academy. So I recommend if you want to get the sort of full overview of this plugin, go check that video out. I'll put a link in the comments below. Um, but we're going to take a look at Backbone and specifically for ripping drum samples from finished tracks. It's kind of like the ultimate tool for me for extracting drum sounds from audio that uh, has other stuff in the background. If you want to sample a kick, for example, from another track. So let's dive in. We're going to take a look at how we can do that with Steinberg's Backbone. Let's check it out. Right, so here we have Steinberg's Backbone. It's a drum resampler. It's a really, really cool tool to have. Uh, so it's not a drum machine per se. It's more like a drum designer. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of creative purposes as well. It's kind of like excels at layering stuff and breaking up uh, audio sources into separate parts that you can work with. Um, so in this case, one really useful uh, a thing that I use this for is for ripping kicks out of tracks uh, and getting rid of the unwanted elements that come with them. So I've just got one of my own tracks here and it's kind of clean the kick that I'm going to sample but you'll hear there's some sort of there's some background ambience so there's some hi-hats and stuff that we want to get rid of as well. So let's take a listen. So this is the sample that I'm working with. I've just taken from the beginning of the track. And we're going to try and rip this kick out uh, of the beginning of the track. So firstly in Cubase, we're just going to kind of top and tail the sample a little bit. We're going to just shorten this so that we can slice it up a little bit into manageable parts. Uh, we'll double click on that and let's just set our event start. Might be a good idea to enable snap to zero crossings as well. Let's just uh, find the start point here. Right, pretty close there. Uh, if you want to snap to zero crossings, you can do that. It should lock into place on the beginning. Uh, the zero crossing is quite handy for grabbing like actual sections of the kick as well if you want to pull out just the sine wave. But we'll just grab that. And at the end, we're just going to kind of shorten this slightly. So you can see the kick kind of tails off around here. So we're just going to cut that out around that section there. And we're going to add just a short little fade onto that. Uh, then I've got a shortcut for bounce audio. I'm just going to bounce that into a new event. So there we have our kick sample. And you can see the sine wave here, but there's a bunch of other noise and things that we're going to try and get rid of here. So let's just drag this into Backbone. Everything's drag and drop. So you can just take this kick sample, plop it in here. And it should now be mapped to C3. Cool, so there we've got our kick, but this is no good to us at the moment with that shaker that you can hear, as well as some of that tonal stuff that you're hearing in the background as well. So we're going to split that out and get rid of that stuff and then make it possible to actually edit this kick to kind of suit us ourselves as well. We can tune it, we can add a bit more punch to it. Uh, so let's see how we do that now. So the, the coolest thing about Backbone for me is this decompose algorithm at the top here. So let's hit pre-listen pre first. It's going to work its magic and then we can hit solo on the tonal section. We can make some adjustments just till we get that low punch that we're looking for. So kind of all the harmonic stuff, I mean, the, the kick drum is essentially just sine waves as well. So we're looking for that, that kind of harmonic content. And then the noise content, we can check that out as well. I'll just want to get that actually a little bit higher. We'll just kind of fiddle around with that until we're happy with that. And let's go with that for now. Um, so we'll unsolo that. Make sure you unsolo it before you do this step. What I'm going to do is hit apply now and watch what happens is it splits the file into two layers for us. So what we have now is 
our top layer, which is the noise element, and the bottom layer, which is our sub or the body of the kick. So now we can kind of go to work and edit this to clean everything up a little bit more. Um, so we're going to start with the noise section first. And you'll see this is the waveform. You can do some extra editing and stuff if you want to just shorten this or, or whatever. Um, so the most important part with this noise section, we want to get rid of this section here. We want to get rid of that um, that shaker. But really all we're really interested in is this this click in the beginning. So what I'm going to do is just grab the amp section. We can bring an amp envelope in. Let's just hit the auto zoom just to bring that into focus. And let's bring our envelope down. So there we kind of got rid of that shaker now. And you see the problem with doing this with just the single sample is by getting rid of that shaker, you'd be getting rid of a lot of the sub element now as well. Uh, but what we've done by splitting them up is we can apply this envelope to just the noise section and then we can put this back together again. You've still got the length of the kick going on as well, which is nice. So that's already a huge improvement. We're almost there, but we still got a little bit of that tonal, that sort of background ambience going on in the kick as well. So the way I'm going to get around this is to actually resample the kick. We could try and pull it out with an envelope. you kind of just starting to hear it over here. But my issue now is that our kick sample is, not, it doesn't have enough of the body that's it's cutting off too quickly. We ideally we want a longer sub tail going on there. So there's a number of ways we can do this. We could try and loop it um, inside this section here. If you set up a loop, and let's check our loop points. You can snap these to the sub. But in this case, there's too much there's too much other harmonic content in there. It's just gonna give us that. Uh, let's just drag this one out. It's giving us too much buzz on that, so that's not gonna work for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up resampling this. So we'll go to the resample section. Let's just mute the top for now. Let's turn on the resampler. And what it's going to do, this is essentially a bit like Serum. Uh, you have a resample option for the wavetables in Serum, and it will convert the audio data into sort of harmonics that you can then work with. So you can hear it's almost the same as the original audio file. However, it's a far more malleable now. You can kind of really kind of work to to adjust this the way that you want it to. So there's a few things you can look at here. You can get the purity. That's already going to get rid of some of the um, the pad sound. But we're losing a little bit of the punch. And you can hear that comes becomes more apparent. So we can take a listen. Bring that down. We're still hearing some of that there. So let's, uh, let's leave the purity and we're going to do something else here instead. Um, we're going to jump back into our waveform editor here. And let's bring the sample end around to somewhere here. So we're looking for a cycle of the sub content that we want to grab and we're going to jump back into the resample mode now. And you have this option here to hold last spectrum. So what this is going to do is it's going to grab this last harmonic here and just kind of loop that out. And we can adjust our envelope again. And you'll see that it'll just play indefinitely. We can play around with where this is going to be. We'll go with something like that. And jump back into the resampler again. Actually, let's just shorten our envelope now. Bring our attack back in again. So that uh, background ambience is pretty much gone now. And we can adjust the envelopes now to suit us. 
that's already pretty good. Now we can take this a step further as well. We can kind of play around with the resampler. We can adjust the speed to get a little bit more punch. It's still going to loop it, so it still doesn't. It doesn't matter how long that kick. We can still hold that kick, even though it's more punchy now because it's playing through the attack phase faster. It's slow actually at that point. It's going to give us more low sound if we play through the attack phase faster, but if we play it slightly slower, it's still nice and punchy. Another thing I'm going to do here is just turn the width down. The resampler can sort of introduce a little bit of stereo uh, artifacts to the sound. So we'll bring the width down so it's completely mono in the subs. Now we can also jump into the pitch section and adjust just the subsection of our kick to kind of suit um, our needs. We can also click this pitch analysis here. It'll kind of analyze the pitch of this thing. You can see it's ending at around G G1 there. So we can then tune it to the pitch. And we can also add a pitch envelope to this to kind of just tweak the sub slightly. I quite like that actually. And then there's a number of other things you can do as well. Uh, let's say for instance, if you wanted to, instead of, if you wanted to keep a little bit more of that noise in there, what you could do is instead use a filter and use the envelope from the filter to cut that noise out from the shaker. We can also just play around with maybe driving that that top end a little bit more. And that's pretty much it. So you can see it's a super powerful tool for kind of um, just creating new sounds from samples you've ripped out of tracks and it's really really easy and intuitive to kind of split those sounds out and uh, take out only the usable stuff that you want uh, we can go and add a few effects and things if you want as well I typically do this in the channel rather uh, it's super simple to get this into a sampler if you're not going to use it inside of uh, backbone as well you can just click and drag from the export section that'll drop it in uh, you can create a sampler track from this if you want we'll say create sampler track and now we have our kick map to a sampler uh, furthermore another thing um, that you can do is let's say for instance you're not so happy with that sub and you wanted to kind of just use the attack you can also just load up something like Sonic Academy's Kick 2 and we can then also solo just the attack phase and open up Sonic Academy's Kick and export just the attack phase into Kick 2 just with a drag like that super simple and if we listen back now we have the attack from that kick And then we can synthesize the bottom instead of using Backbone if you'd like to do it that way instead. So yeah, um, this is kind of my go-to now for designing drum sounds. Uh, super, super cool plugin. If you want to, like I said, if you want to check out the full sort of overview, um, I, I did a video for Sonic Academy, which I will link in the comments that you can check out. Um, but highly recommend you go and check this one out. I'm using this all the time at the moment. Uh, yeah, that's Backbone from Steinberg. Uh, as always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure that you turn on the notifications to stay up to date with all our latest videos. I will catch you guys again soon right here at Marula Music. Cheers.